Welcome. This is the Epson Artisan 1430 printer and I am reviewing this. I actually have three of these printers here. I'm also going to be doing another video, a comparison video of the 1430 to kind of its predecessor, uh, the Epson P400. I'll do that as a separate video. This is just a review of this one here. It prints 13 by 19 sheets and it prints on almost everything I've put in here. Uh, prints just great on normal paper as well as very thick things, even canvas. Um, I have a CIS system installed on all three of these and I use these so often that I actually have a bypass uh, system. Once the pad inside um, gets full of all the print head cleanings and all the extra overspray you need to install one of these. I will put a link of everything that I use in the description below. This is a great printer. Um, it prints. It's one of the fastest uh, photo printers in its class. It has yellow, black, light cyan, light magenta, magenta, and cyan. So you do get, I'll show you a color sample, print sample, uh, the colors are really good. Um, now I'm using um, third-party inks uh, because I have the CIS system installed back there. It fits nicely back there as well, the system that I have. So, um, you know, if you're looking to get one of these, I would recommend installing a CIS. I have a link to a video I did of installing the CIS system because I made some modifications so that the lid rests as low as it possibly can. A lot of the others kind of raise it up a little. I don't like that. So I've actually made a modification there to accommodate the ink lines. Um, it is adjustable. There are some, when I said I print canvas, uh, that does take some babying. It, can handle anything really thinner than that than canvas without a problem. It comes with the attachment for the CD and DVD um, printing, which is which is nice if you need it. I don't know if too many people need that anymore, but it's there. Now it can print uh, borderless printing. However, it doesn't retain the size in borderless printing. That's an option on the P400. Um, what I mean by that is if you say print borderless, um, it will give you an option of minimum expansion, medium, or max expansion, which means you're not going to get the full image. Um, on higher-end printers, you can retain the size. So, like I might create a black border all the way around, um, so I don't want it to expand the actual image. Um, so I get a black print uh, all around the border without losing it. So you can accommodate for that, but just that's one of the things that you may be interested in knowing. But these are great printers. I've had this, uh, I use these every day for two years, more than two years actually. And uh, they haven't let me down. Um, they do. I have discovered that if you keep your printer off and you keep your uh, all of the flaps closed the print head won't dry out and actually a lot of times when you have a clogged print head you actually have just air in the line um, but I do have a print head cleaning solution that I use I'll put a link for that in the description so these are great printers so it can print 13 by uh, I want to say a hundred and something inches long so you can get some really long panoramas. It doesn't have any attachments or adapters to it. So no roll feeder and no rear paper tray. Uh, what you see is what you get. There's an option in the print settings. I'll go ahead and go to my computer and show you the settings that I use when I print on this. Okay, so here is a uh, public domain image. It's got lots of colors. We're gonna go ahead and print this. Before we print the picture, I'm going to show you the uh, print manager settings here. If you're not using any other software, um, if you go to options here, you have the option to print thick paper and envelopes. I know that's a question for some people. How thick can it print? 
like I said, I've printed on canvas with mixed success. Some of it does well, some doesn't. Um, so I have that on. It does go slower when you have that on. So we'll go ahead and put it off since we're just doing photo paper. You get higher quality if you turn high speed printing off as well. So with that in mind, um, warning notifications, that's like the ink levels and all that stuff from what I can tell. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Uh, with the utility also, you have the standard clean the print heads test page and the, uh, and the official Epson printer utility. But we'll just check these here so we have high speed printing off. We're going to go ahead and say print. Okay, now we're going to go to print settings. There's semi okay, it is a semi gloss photo paper, so we will have that um, there. It is not an official Epson, it's Costco uh, photo paper, and we will have it on photo RPM. This gives the higher resolution than the photo option. Now, I'll show you if I went with borderless. Like I said, you can't retain the size, so we'll keep that off. And we will go ahead and say print, and we will time it. So it's sending the data, and this printer is uh, wireless as well, but we just sent the data through the USB port. So those are your two options, wireless or USB with the Epson 1430. And I will do a, a time lapse here once it gets going so we're not wasting our time. And with this one here, you can open it without triggering any sensors. However, there are some magnetic sensors on the front door. Some of these um, don't work. One of these will print regardless if the door is closed or not. It's not supposed to, and that was the way it functioned from when I got it uh, new from Epson. So as you can see here, let's go ahead and it's looking good. This is a dye based ink. I did read on a few forums that people have put um, sublimation inks and pigment inks in their CIS systems and that is working fine. I have not done that. I will be doing that. Um, on my oldest 1430. Um, just as a test, I'll run it probably for maybe even a year, maybe six months to make sure that I don't run into any problems and then I may convert the rest. I'll show you uh, the comparison of what um, a pigment versus dye ink and this is third-party dye. I'll, I'll put a link to where I get my dye as well. Now keep in mind this is the highest uh, setting and it does make a difference. I've noticed that some of my prints, um, if I put it on the lower setting, can't really tell. But on others it makes a huge difference. So Now as far as color accuracy goes, um, I used to have an Apple display monitor. I recently switched to an ASUS monitor that's not actually for graphic design, but it's been so close. And a lot of times you can't tell unless you're looking at the two, the print and the monitor, to see the differences. So, you know, it's kind of like when you go buy a television, you're looking at 20 televisions. Well, one that costs $3,000 more uh, looks a lot better, but the other one still looks fantastic if you just were looking at it on its own. So it's kind of relative there. Now on thicker stocks, as it's printing, I'll point this out, on thicker stock papers you are going to see um, occasionally, depending on how thick, if it's really thick you're going to see it all the time, black edges on here. Um, even if you select the print um, thick stock or envelopes, you will see a little bit of a black edge. Now if you print borderless, you don't have that, even on the thicker stocks, oddly. I don't know what the difference is or what, what the um, reasoning is behind that, but it just is. 
So hopefully we don't run out of ink on this print. So we can see how vibrant and uh, colorful this is. See a difference on the blacks. And I'll show you the print from the Epson P400 to give you an idea of what it looks like on that. Now that's a pigment ink printer, the P400, and this is dye ink. Dye ink is usually a lot brighter, a lot more vivid, but it doesn't last as long. It fades if you're in a room with any kind of direct sunlight, high humidity, and high heat. Um, it doesn't hold up too well. However, prints with this ink look fantastic for years and years and years if it's in a maintained uh, temperature room and it's not in direct sunlight. Okay, so there we have it. Took quite a while to print. I'll go ahead and show it at different angles. So you can see how sometimes, you know, you get blacks and they just appear funny. This looks good all over. So one of the things that I will point out on this, this is using third-party inks, not official Epson inks. And yes, there is a difference in color. Um, the Epson inks do look better. I don't have any because it's been so long because to me, these have always been good enough, the colors from the third party. But if you are one of the, uh, you know, color snobs, if you're a color snob, um, you're going to be paying, you know, through the nose for it, but there is a difference. And so if you buy the CIS system, uh, it's back there, this is the bypass tank, that's the CIS system. If you buy the CIS system, um, you're going to be saving a lot more money. And the color, you know, like I said, is good enough. So in here, though, I'll show you. The CIS system that I have installed has the highest capacity for this printer. And it has this awesome button right here. So you're not taking out any of your cartridges ever. When it's time to reset your ink, when it says we don't recognize these printers or their the ink is low according to our um, sensors, you push this button right here. It moves it across and puts it in position. Let's see, here it goes. All right, now all you all you have to do is just hold this in for a few seconds. No removing cartridges, nothing like that. Push the ink button again. And it will continue printing on the job that it was working on. So if it stops in the middle, don't think you lost anything. It will just keep printing whatever it's working on. Sometimes, however, that's when air gets up into the printhead and you need to do some purges or um, you can just use some printhead cleaning that, that solution. That seems to work well. So that, that was that uh, detail. So anyway, that is the Epson... 1430. It is, uh, I love this printer. It's fantastic. I don't have any complaints about this printer that I can think of other than they're getting a little old. I'm actually going to order some new ones of the 1430. Um, because they're just, they're just workhorses. So once they get on the older side, once a week, I have to really, um, do some print head cleanings. But I've noticed that since I kept the printer off, it lasts a lot longer without having to do printhead cleanings. I hope this review was helpful for you. It's a great printer. You can't go wrong with the price. It really is an entry-level prosumer printer, but I use it every day. I've used this. I print hundreds and hundreds of prints on these every month for several years. No problems at all. They're really workhorses. They produce excellent colors very vivid very bright i'm happy with it so let me know what you think let me know if you have any questions or comments in the section below and uh, like i said everything that i covered uh, as far as accessories or uh, things and even just to buy the printer is in the link below thanks for watching